I'm Hemant Mehta. And I'm Jessica Blimke. And you're listening to the podcast for FriendlyAtheist.com. You can now listen to all of our episodes and see show notes at FriendlyAtheistPodcast.com. By the way, we now have a merchandise shop on the website. So if you want your podcast swag, and you know you do, go to our website and click on the store tab. Shauna Linne is an adult film star who has appeared on the cover of Penthouse and won an AVN Award for Unsung Starlet of the Year. She left the adult industry for four years, at which point she attended college, began a couple of small businesses as well, but she's back making movies. And we would read you the titles, except uh, neither of us can say them with a straight face sometimes. So so just Google, <laughs> Google Shauna's name and you'll be just fine. Uh, Shauna, thanks so much for being here with us. Thank you so much for having me. So, Shauna, you're definitely kind of a step away from our usual guest, but um, Hemant kind of came across you when you made a video recently and you called it controversial, which, given your line of work, was an interesting descriptor, and it was just the fact that you're an atheist. Yeah, the person on the video said, like, tell us something controversial about you, or he pointed out that uh, the fact that you were an atheist was controversial, so why is that yeah. why is that the controversial thing about you? I don't know. For some reason people I think have, it's controversial because people usually don't talk about it. So sure. I have no problem talking about it and I think people are very shocked by that. I mean, is that I, I, is that something you so you said you don't talk about that in the industry and religion and politics aren't things that come up on the set? I'm, like, the only one who really does talk about those things um, because what I'm interested in, what everyone's religious beliefs are, um, is just a curious factor I have. Um, I found that a lot of uh, people in my industry are agnostic um, or religious. I've heard of girls carrying Bibles everywhere to set. Um, I know some of the guys are very religious as well, but they do not attend church. So I'm the only one who really speaks about it because I'm curious. So explain that one to me for a second. <laughs> so tell me about these people who are coming to the set with Bibles or, I don't know, cross necklaces, because I'm trying to figure out... How they justify yeah, that. Yeah, how did they justify what they do for a living with their faith? Do you know? Um, I, I have no... I can't even answer that. I know a lot of them have cross tattoos or wear cross necklaces. Um, I really... I don't have the answer for that. Do you ever bring this stuff I up? About it. <laughs> Do you ever bring any of these topics up when you guys are not filming? Do you ever talk about it with your co-stars, with the people who are on the production staff? I do. I do. A lot of um, I have found that a lot of uh, people in the industry are atheists, so it's it's fun when someone else is atheist on that because we can talk about it. And sometimes they're just agnostic and they say that they believe in a creator or a higher being, mm-hmm. but they don't think that they're being their every move is being watched or that they're being judged by making porn. Very interesting. Do you think being an atheist, uh, be, like I would imagine one of the constant criticisms people would have is, oh, you're an atheist, so you're of course you're doing porn because, <laughs> you know, you're not worried about uh, God's wrath on you or something. Uh I guess, you know, is that a is that something you ever think about, or is this, no, this is what I do. It's not a big deal. I feel like it must con- uh, bring conservative Christians a lot of glee to be like, ha-ha, the porn star is a heathen. I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the two words together, like atheist, porn star. Everyone likes to merge them, and I've become the atheist porn star, which is really weird. <laughs> There's a niche market. A normal girl who happens to, have, um, to be in the adult industry who is, atheist to me it's just normal um i've been in the adult industry 10 years so to me it's just my normal life um, it's just weird to everybody else to uh stereotype me sure what what does that mean i guess uh for those people who are listening and i'm guessing most of our listeners are atheists uh for you what does that entail being an atheist uh who's in this industry does that mean you talk about this stuff when I mean obviously you're not talking about this when you're making <laughs> when you're filming movies. anything but like <laughs> how do you how do you advocate your atheism outside of that um do you mean like outside of the adult industry in my my everyday life in your everyday life, and even when you're not filming, whether I don't know if it's uh, something you talk about with your fans, whether it's something you do on your social media at all, or is it just a personal thing? Yeah, I, 
It's a lot. It's big on social media because I agree with a lot of the points a lot of the atheist pages have. So I share them because to me they're true. And I get a lot of hate. I was actually banned um, from Facebook for three days back Oops. in March. Oh no! <laughs> because you tweeted for something offensive. <laughs> really? See, yes. that's so funny because you hear all the time, like, J.K. Rowling says something about her feminist beliefs or whatever, and someone's like, oh, you've ruined Harry Potter for me. But are people like, I can't watch your movies anymore <laughs> because now I know you don't embrace Jesus? I mean, is that... Yeah, they, people flag them as offensive, but I feel like if someone can post uh, quotes about God and from the Bible saying that I'm going to hell, I think... I'm putting a little critical thinking into a meme and posting it isn't nearly as bad. (laughs) You would think so. (laughs) I love the idea that someone's going on uh, Shauna's, like, Facebook page and they're (laughs) like, like, you know what I don't like here? This quote about science. (laughs) So one of the things I saw is you were actually... uh, a po- you had like a t-shirt that said, oh my God, and I'm totally forgetting the, what it said oh, on the shirt. Oh, you dropped the ball. I know. Oh, the I only date atheists. That's shirt. the one. Oh, funny. Yeah, and I think it was uh, Reasonist Products was the line of clothing that it was. Ooh, buzz marketing. Yeah. yeah. Very smart marketing, yeah. by the way. Amazing. But how does that come up in your life? Do, is that true? Do you actually only date atheists? Well, it kind of is because it's easier for me to find somebody that's has a life that falls into sync with mine. Um, about a year ago, I dated a girl who was not atheist, and she was very religious. She had Jesus tattooed onto her arm. And it just it didn't feel right with me because I just felt like our lifestyles are so different. Mm-hmm. Was she also in the so industry or outside atheist. of it? What was that? Was she also oh, in the industry? the industry? Okay. So how did, I guess I'm really curious, how did she and you start dating if... She's outside the industry, and you guys are so different theologically. How did you guys even meet, if I may ask? <laughs> we met. We met through a friend. Okay. Basically, it was really, it, we met through a friend, and it kind of went on from there. Can I? I feel like this is such a white bread cre- question, but can I ask how you got into adult films? Yeah, of course. Um, I started modeling, acting in high school through. Barbizon and a local modeling agency and I was doing monologue competitions in New York and LA and they were a lot of money and my parents didn't have, they had enough money, I don't know how they made it work to pay all the money they did, but when I turned 18, I I had a son at 17, so he was nine months when I turned 18 years old Mm. and I didn't want help from anyone, I just wanted to take care of all my responsibilities myself. So I decided to enter the adult industry um, so that I wouldn't really have money problems, actually. I mean, do you feel like in hindsight that you went in with your eyes wide open about it? Or do you think looking back when you're 18 years old that, like, you know, I didn't know what I was getting into? Looking back, I had no idea. In fact, I probably, I was probably really crazy. Like, I found an agent in L.A., I jumped on a plane, and I just started making movies within two weeks and i probably wouldn't do that now that i'm older Mm -hmm. (laughs) what what have you learned what do you know now about the industry that you wish you knew when you were 18 Um, i wish i would have been more confident at 18 to stand up for myself i think now i'm really not afraid to stand up for myself and i think i got taken advantage of a lot Mm -hmm. i wish i could go back and just be able to say no to the things I didn't want to do. Sure. Um, I mean, and you've stayed in the industry for, what, 10 years now? So it must be, what, what's keeping you here 10 years later? Um, I actually enjoy it. I love performing. I love seeing dialogue on camera. I love um, just making a really sexy scene. I'm kind of in, like, this romantic trend right now in my career, and I, I'm really focused on making love with my male performers. And I have such strong relationships with everyone in the industry. I've known most of the male performers for these whole 10 years, so I feel really close to them. And I couldn't imagine not being around everyone in the industry. I would miss them. I missed them so much when I was gone for four years. 
So, do, do you call all the shots in terms of like what you do, what you don't do? Do you get like the final say in this stuff, or is someone still saying, uh, "I don't know, you work for us, so you're going to do the mm-hmm. following things"? How much control do you have? Um, of course, every girl has control. She if she says no, usually the directors are pretty awesome. They'll work around it. Sometimes there are script writers, and they write the most ridiculous things <laughs> that don't even seem possible like a standing doggy in the shower and or balancing on a three inch wedge or on the outside on a really hot rock and sometimes you just have to deal with it and you just have to make it look good who is writing um, gymnast porn <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna do a pole vault and then land things. and um but but eventually I think if a girl is having trouble, like, completing something, it's always usually worked around. Because if it's not worked around, then everybody loses money. Yeah. I, I mean, it sounds like... I feel like people have these misconceptions about, like, girls who get into porn and, like, they're trapped in it or they can't get out and they have these scumbag, like, people bossing around. But you sound like... I, I'm so, like, pleasantly surprised how passionate you are about... God, that was a terrible choice of words. <laughs> One of the worst, worst stereotypes that I hear is that um, us girls are human traffic. Yeah. And I just want to say that it's not true. Um, to get into the industry, there's a process. Mm-hmm. You have to go online, find an agent, send your pictures. Um, you have to fly to L.A., meet with the agent, get tested, which, I mean, these are all expensive. Mm-hmm. You have to stay in a model house or hotel. Um, and then you have to wait like one to two weeks for a shoot. So it's not just like you're instantly in it. You kind of have to really hope for a few weeks. You have to go meet with directors and producers so they so they know what you look like and know if you're comfortable. And if a girl's not comfortable, they won't shoot her if they mm. think that it's going to be a bad decision for her. So it sounds like you're doing everything the way it ought to be right. done. I mean, everything seems very regulated and very professional. And I wonder if you're the anomaly That's, to that. Oh, took the words like, out of my mouth. are there are there girls who get into this industry because for for all the wrong reasons, not not just on their end, like oh, their head's not in the right place. Mm-hmm. But are there women that yeah. you ever meet who are trafficked, who who do Taking have advantage these? Of- yeah. I think sometimes girls are taken advantage of. They might just feel pressure that they have to do things that they might not want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, So I just make sure that all the new girls coming in, I just make sure that they have a do and don't list and know their limits and stick to those limits. And instead of saying yes when passing a limit, just take a couple days to think about it if needed. Let Let me switch gears for a second. You're someone I would feel is pretty successful in the adult industry. And I wonder, uh, at what point did you know, yeah, you made it. Like, you've, you've been, you're doing this. It's going well. You can keep doing this. Um, and you know that this is right for you versus you want to leave the industry. Only this past year. Oh, really? Wow. Why? What happened this past I year? Because I was always confused. Like, I never knew what I wanted to do forever. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was going to, I had plans, I said, okay, I'm going to get out at 23 and then focus on something else. And then I worked a corporate job last summer before I returned, and I hated it. I hated it. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst. Um, <laughs> it just, it wasn't for me, I was miserable. And I talked to my mom about it, and we decided that this would actually be a better situation for us, because it allows me to work a little amount of time and Uh make the most amount of money and I'm always at home with my children. So it allows me to work and be a stay-at-home mom almost at the same time. That's That's kind of amazing. (laughs) Are you currently under contract with uh, a different group right now or are you working for yourself? Um, I am working for myself. I am a direct model, so the directors and producers can call them for bookings. Um, I I was going to be a free agent last year and handle all my bookings myself, and then I realized that would be a lot of work. So I'm so happy to have my agent. They do a great job for me. What What makes you so good? I mean, and I don't mean this with any disrespect. There are a lot of other attractive women out there. They don't have nearly the amount of scenes that you have. They don't mm-hmm. have the a social media presence that you have. 
what makes you so much better at doing your line of work than other women who may very well, I don't know how to put this, but they might have the skills to do it, but they haven't achieved what you have. So what makes you so good at it? Um, I have no idea because when I started in the industry, like it wasn't on the internet. It was still like DVD time. So I I didn't grow my name from social media at first, which is weird. Um, I just, I got a lot of box covers when I was younger when DVDs were still out. So how has the internet changed your industry? Because it has to be a dramatic change, right? It's so, it's so different. A lot of it is more corporate. And it, our industry has shrunk so much. Um, one statistic I have seen was that there was 200 companies in the Valley in 2010, and now that there's 50. Oh, wow. And there's so much less work. Um, I used to be able to work six days a week if I wanted, and now I'm um, by choice is working every six to eight weeks for um, like five suits every six to eight weeks. So that way I know that the work is there because there's not much to go around. I see. There's so many girls now too. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot different and our rates are lower because Mm -hmm. there's so much free stuff going out there. So uh, you have a 12 year old? And I have an eleven and four year old. Eleven and four year old. And I guess your eleven year old would is he he or she, sorry, uh old enough to Um, that's my boy. Un, does he understand what you do or do you talk to him about him? Like what kind of discussion do you have about your work or if any at all? I keep it yeah, I keep it all age appropriate. Mm-hmm. Um he knows that I model in lingerie. Um he has seen my lingerie modeling pictures mm-hmm. that are more rated R. Um, just like a Victoria's Secret ad. So he knows that I'm in entertainment. Uh, He knows I host parties, and he knows I model. So for right now, that's all he knows. It's all he really needs to know. And I figure in four years, hopefully I'll have have to have have another conversation. And I also keep parental blocks on all my computers and tablets at home. That makes sense. Do you think he, uh, my daughter is... thinks I work at the airport? <laughs> <laughs> is that is that on purpose or on accident? Well, on accident, it's, I keep trying to tell her I don't work at the airport, but for her, she sees me go to the airport and then go to I go to Vegas and LA. But she doesn't. She's never been on a plane, so she doesn't understand. What are you afraid of your son finding out? Because, I mean, I think what, oh. what you're saying makes sense in terms right. of age appropriateness and everything. Uh, I mean, what are you afraid of him learning? Are you afraid of him learning what you do because I don't know why? What exactly are you worried about? I'm not really worried about him finding out because I have a – I just – I know my son and I know how kind-hearted he is. And I know that he would be full of understanding um, of our life circumstances. He knows that I was a really young mom. And I feel like he would be understanding. I'm not worried about him finding out. I'm worried about how other kids are going to treat him because of it. Sure. Right. I had a, I had this question about you, actually, which is I have to imagine that when you are very attractive and you do porn for a living, the guys you meet, and, and probably girls too, do they treat you differently? Uh, and not just the people who know you really well, but I, I mean, I don't know if a guy opens the door for you at a restaurant or something, not even a guy you're with. Is it because they like know who you are and that's weird? Like, how do you know when they're just being nice to you because they're nice people or they're trying to get something from you? You know, like it's just that's, so many guys around you have to be skeezy. Right. Yeah. That's a great question, which reminds me of a situation that happened last week. Um, I was at the dollar store buying for tickets to my daughter um, for her little, like, art bag. And some guy came up to me, older guy, gave me his card um, and asked me out to lunch. But I I didn't know if he was a fan or just um, a guy at the store, which right. drove me crazy because I just didn't know how to proceed from there. Um, I texted him, and he never texted back, actually. But... <laughs> Do you want to call him out on this show? (laughs) So I keep a really close... My friends are all friends I've known, like, my whole life that I went to school with. I still live back home. Mm -hmm. So they're all very supportive of what I do. And um, 
the guys, my guy friends are really respectful, but online it makes it difficult because I just get a lot of weird messages. Oh, yeah. oh I'm sure you do. <laughs> How, this is totally random, but like, okay, you grew up in Ohio. I think that's pretty public information, right? So if you grew up in Ohio, which is a pretty conservative state, where is this interest in science and atheism uh, and even porn to an extent? Like that seems the antithesis of what I would expect from someone coming out of Ohio. So where is that side coming from? Well, I grew up on a farm and I, I didn't have many friends. My best friend was like a mile away. So I had a life on the farm. I grew up taking an- taking care of animals and hanging out outside and reading. I was just past the time with reading. I love I love books and I love reading about history and science. Was and there so a that's specific kind of where it all started? Was there a specific book that you read that you're like, I think I'm an atheist? Oh. Hmm. That's a good question. I don't think there was a book. I think it was when I found out it was a- what atheism even was was on Facebook. Um, <laughs> it was a year and a half ago, and I didn't even know it was a thing. Oh wow! And at the time, I was going through a breakup, and uh, my ex was kind of a mean person, and he wanted to go to church to make himself better. And how how I knew I was an atheist was because I knew I was like, church is not going to make you better; you're going to make you better. So and you kind of I intuitively kind of knew all this stuff. And I started researching it from there. Interesting. Were you raised religious? I was not raised religious. I didn't go to church very often when I was little. My family is Roman Catholic, and I'm actually the only one who hasn't been baptized. <laughs> oh, so I'm kind of already the odd one. <laughs> so you grew up in a Roman Catholic family, and yet your mom and you talk about the stuff you do. So she clearly must be okay with it or she understands it. So how does she reconcile that? My mom will not admit that she's agnostic, but she is. Okay. Oh, man. She, she totally admits that all of the things in the Bible are stories because I've always questioned her starting maybe on 13, 14, like how are these stories true? And she would just say they're not true, they're just stories. And I would just question about deep things in life, like, do we come back after we're dead? But she wants, I believe she just wants to believe heaven is real very badly because, you know, my grandpa passed away last February, so everyone in the family just likes to believe that he's in heaven watching down on earth. Do the people you work with on the shoots and everything, how many of them, when they leave the industry, uh, they're almost doing it voluntarily? And I ask that because, I mean, I've heard some stories from Christian people. I mean, I once, I went to a debate once years ago. I don't even know if I told Jessica this. I went to a debate years ago that was between Ron Jeremy, the porn star, and a pastor of a church that catered to women leaving porn because they were going to help them get out. So they're debating about whether porn is It was actually a great, yeah, it was was a debate about whether porn is okay or not. Mm -hmm. Uh, Interesting debate, but... Um, what was interesting is that this guy was like, all these women who are in porn, mm-hmm. they want to get out, and I want to help them come to Jesus, basically. Um, bad choice of words, I know. <laughs> um, but I, I guess, how many when of these... I, when I quit in 2010, yeah. all I did was tell my agent I wanted to take some time off, and he said, okay, I'll be here if you want to come back. And I called him four and a half years later, and I came back. <laughs> But it wasn't. I I was able to leave. It wasn't. I wasn't stuck. I mean, as long as you are financially planned to leave, which I think it's totally possible. I have to assume that's the big problem, right? Like if you're, it's just every every uh, pro athlete is running the same thing. Of like, they all right. of a sudden get a big lump sum of money. Nobody's teaching them how to manage it, so they have to keep doing what they're doing, lest they go broke. Which I right, have to assume. Exactly. It's not like somebody's like putting a gun in their head and making them keep right. doing porn, right? It's just they want to keep up this lifestyle or they just need money and that's their yeah, skill. Yeah, correct. Or they're just not sure what to do because in our heads, I mean, I don't know how many times I've heard, like, they're never going to be able to find a real job. But I mean, I did find a corporate job last summer and everyone, they actually knew what I did <laughs> and they just didn't talk about it. 
Well, that's so nice of them. I, I mean, was good. able to find another job. <laughs> and you just didn't like it. You wanted to go back to this. I, I hated it. Yeah. I hated it so much. So, I mean... I if, was working 60 hours. I, by the time I paid for gas and child care, it wasn't worth it to me. Sure. So, what uh, do you know how much longer you want to keep performing and what you want to do when you're done? Yeah, my forever job, I just I just want to love design. I love design every day. Okay. Um, I have a few online stores, so I hope that's going to be my forever job. I'm thinking I'm going to keep saving and maybe six to ten years. I'm not really in a hurry to quit right now because I've only been back for a year exactly, basically. And uh, I want to definitely ride this out for at least six years and just have fun and go on this ride and have the time of my life. 2015 has been the best year I've ever had. What makes this year better than the rest? I'm just so confident with who I am and my beliefs, and I feel like I finally know who I am and where I'm supposed to be and what I need to be doing. We talked earlier about the Internet and how that changed everything, and I wonder, does the age range for performers, is that longer now? Because, I mean, if you think about some of the the genres of porn that are out there Mm -hmm. they do cater to older women as well and you're not even close to being older at all but it means if you wanted to you could stay in for a long time i don't know if that was the case before the internet exploded but uh do you have like a set date in your head like all right you know by the time i'm i don't know 38 i'm done or is it just i'm gonna keep going until i want to stop I think I'm going to keep going until my gut feeling says I need to make up another plan. And I'm going to keep saving and I'm, you know, earning residual income. And I'm just going to try to build up my other businesses so that one day when I do want to quit, I have a backup plan. And I could I could just do, like, web design doesn't even work to me. And I could just do what I enjoy for the rest of my life. I've heard some stories about porn stars, and, and we've all seen this, where... Some people begin in porn, but they use that as a springboard to launch another type of career, whether it's, I don't know, writing, whether it's acting in mainstream films or anything like that. Do you want to do anything like that? Or are you thinking, no, I like the adult industry. And then when I'm done with it, I'm done with it. I don't want to do anything else remotely connected to it. Like, would you want to direct or do you want to do something else? Oh, yeah. I love to be creative. I never saw myself as a director until I came back into the industry because now I feel like I know everything about being a performer. It's like so easy to me. I know the routine and I'm I got I'm bored with it. So now I'm learning about cameras and angles and I'm watching the directors and their settings they push. So I'm I am learning more about directing and I hope to have that chance one day just to show my creative side and and the visions I see in my mind, I would love to share them with everybody. That's awesome to hear. One of the things Jessica and I were mentioning before we got on air was California passed a law not too long ago that required performers oh, to like wear condoms. Uh, how did that affect your work? And, you know, is that a good law or a bad law? I personally feel like it affected my work in a negative way. Um It's hard to work. I don't feel like condoms were made for porn and the type of sex and at the angles we do. And I've seen the guys just get really, like, torn up from them, and I feel bad for them. (laughs) Yikes. Bad choice of words as well (laughs) with the condoms. I think she means literally. I know, I know. (laughs) Yikes. it's, It's harder. We have to stop the scene and go and... We're, we're like we're clean people, and to just be treated like we're dirty like that is just—it's it's horrible. Because I, I, I believe in our testing standards. Um, I get tested every two weeks before my shoots, and most mostly everybody has either thirty day or fourteen day test. Most companies require a fourteen day test. I have full full faith in our testing system, and I just don't think the condoms are necessary. Do you and I use... think it should be up to the girl also. Yeah. Do, do you use, uh, are you working in California where that's required, or do you have, like, workarounds for that? Like, they film the scenes in other places then? Um, yes, we do, do use the condoms in California as much as we don't want to. We have to. And then we also shoot in Vegas, which mm. I've been shooting more in Vegas than in L.A. this year. That makes sense. 
Well, Shauna, thank you so much. We're going to have links uh, to your website and your Twitter feed and whatever else you want. Uh, but thank you so okay, much. Where, thank you. Where can people find you if they're interested? In, uh, I'm sure they could find you if they want to watch you. But where <laughs> else can they go to learn more about you? Um, just come visit my blog, Uh where I release all kinds of different things and things that are non-adult related, uh, atheist related, what products you should check out, beauty tips for ladies. And going to my Twitter, Shauna Lene Show, is the best way to find all my links because I'm posting all day long. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for listening to the podcast for FriendlyAtheist.com. This episode was taped at Cinnamon Sound Studios in Aurora, Illinois, and the music was written and performed by Brad Chagdis. If you like what you're hearing, please consider making a contribution at Patreon.com slash Hemant. That's he T. We appreciate your support. I'm Hemant Mehta. And I'm Jessica Blumke. We hope you'll join us next time.